Gen 2 Linux is well known as a source-based Linux distro, and I'd argue at this point, it's really the only one left that has any sort of real popularity. But being a source-based Linux distro comes with a pretty serious problem. It's a source-based Linux distro, and compiling code takes a little bit of time. Now, this is especially a problem on the older hardware, but even on modern devices, if you're running a desktop environment, you're running LibreOffice or any of these other projects that take a really long time to compile, they take a really long time to compile. Now that's not to say you can't do it. You can set up Gen 2 on a PS2. You don't want to do this, but it can be done. But for obvious reasons, this can act as a serious barrier to entry. And you may have heard by now, but Gen 2 goes binary. Now we need to be super duper clear about what this actually means. Because some people will read this title, and I've seen comments like this, and think, Oh my god, what's the point of Gen 2 now? Gen 2 is over! If Gen 2 is a binary distro, there's no reason for it to exist! That's not what's happening, calm down. It's still a source-based distro. The binary stuff is in addition to that. So Gen 2 since God knows how long ago has supported installing binary packages with its package manager, Portage, 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 however you're supposed to say it, the Gen 2 package manager. And you'll often see people installing binary packages for things like their kernel or their web browser because they don't want to waste their entire day compiling their kernel or their web browser. Now, the kernel makes sense to compile because you might want to do some like weird compilation flags, but if you don't want to, a binary package is going to do the job perfectly fine like it will on pretty much every other distro. Now, finding things like the browser and the kernel are easy enough to do, and this is what I did during my Gen 2 install stream. The issue is the spread and the availability of these packages. So these were mostly relegated to portage overlays, which were collections of e-builds, in more general Linux terms, third-party repos. So there's no guarantee that these packages would even be up to date, or they would work with the up-to-date packages on Gen 2. There is no guarantee regarding the build flags. So if something is built against x86-64 v3, and you're running x86-64 v2 hardware, that package is just not going to work. But now there is a new solution. To speed up working with slow hardware and for overall convenience, we're now also offering binary packages for download and direct installation. For most architectures, this is limited to the core system and weekly updates. Not so for AMD64, which is what you're likely running on your desktop, and ARM64, however. This being things like the Apple Silicon. There we've got a stunning over 20 gigabytes of packages on our mirrors, from LibreOffice to KDE Plasma, and from GNOME to Docker. Gen 2 stable, updated daily. Enjoy and read on for more details. Now, um, that just links you back to this same page. I'm not entirely sure why this link is here. <laughs> If someone can explain that to me, let me know. And I hope you like graphs, because here is a graph of packages being added into the repo. As of a couple of days ago, ARM64 was at about 27, 28 gigabytes, and AMD64 is a bit over 45. So I don't know why they said above 20, but I guess it's technically above 20. It's just a lot more above 20. Whatever, doesn't matter. And as you can see, other architectures are supported as well. Things like x86, which is the 32-bit version of AMD64. You've got 32-bit ARM and all of these other things, many of which you probably are never going to touch in your entire life. But if you have some weird, like, Itanium64 hardware sitting around, I guess you can install some binary packages. Even though these other ones are fairly niche, since they are supported by Gen 2 generally, they probably should be supported by the binary solution as well. In other words, Gen 2 now offers a first-party binary package repo, like you would have with the Arch Linux repos, or the Fedora repos, or the Ubuntu repos, or any other repos out there you want to think of, because that's the way we typically do repos on Linux. But... Like those other distros, it's not just a single server. This also interacts with their existing mirror infrastructure. 
so my downloads are slow, then pretty please use a local mirror instead of downloading from the University of Oregon. You can just edit the URI in your Etsy slash portage slash bin repos dot com. And yes, that's safe because of the cryptographic signature. So yes, like you would expect from any sensibly run distro, every package is going to be cryptographically signed. If you'd like to go and test that stuff, all of the details are here, and it is using the same keys that are used on the Gen 2 stages. Whilst it says we've got a stunning over 20 gigabytes of packages on our mirrors, realistically, even at 45 here, that isn't that many packages. But this is a fairly new project. I've known about this a bit longer than it's been public, but this is basically just getting started. Over time, more packages are going to be added, more use cases are going to be covered, and hopefully at some point, everything that is available on Gen 2 is available in these repos, and then anything new that is added is also going to be available here as well. But as they say, they're doing daily updates, so I wouldn't want them to expand too quickly and then just like lose control of things and not be able to update things and some things start breaking and it's just a giant mess. So expand slowly over the next couple of months, get it into a state where it's actually good and usable and consistently good and usable, and then expand and just keep going like that. Now being Gen 2, compile flags are very important. Anytime I talk to a Gen 2 user, they have to tell me about the compile flags they use. Now, because these are intended to be very, very generic packages, the compile flags also have to be very, very generic. So, for the AMD64 packages, we're using mArch equals x86-64, mtune equals generic, dash o2, dash pipe. So, for anyone who's not a Gen 2 user, let's explain this. So, the first one means generate CPU instructions for the baseline x86-64. Not for v2, not for v3, not for v4, for the absolute baseline that should run on every single x86-64 CPU. Now, the second part means tune those instructions in a very generic way. Don't tune it for Intel or anything else, just do the basic optimizations. Now, dash O2 means run all of the GCC optimizations that don't involve a space-to-speed trade-off. This is the general recommended default that Gen 2 uses. And finally, dash pipe does not affect the generated code. This is an optimization when compiling the code. So instead of using temporary files, it'll move things around using pipes. Assuming you have enough memory to do so, this can massively speed up the compilation times. But if you don't, GCC can crash because you just ran out of memory. So the TLDR is don't do anything special, don't do anything innovative, be like Starfield. Be the absolute acceptable baseline that just works. But hey, that's not optimized for my CPU. Well, tough luck. You can still compile packages yourself just as before. This is intended to have a working binary package that just works everywhere with no additional troubles. If you want to have something more than that, well, you better start spinning up that fan. I said it before, but this is worth highlighting again. Binary packages are not replacing source packages. Source packages are part of the identity of Gen 2. They are what set Gen 2 apart from distros like Arch Linux, like Void, and all of these others. They are likely never going away. But binary packages are here as an option for users who would like to go and use them. Say you have hardware that you want to run up-to-date software on, but the hardware's a little bit old and isn't really that suitable for doing frequent rebuilds. Well, binary packages are available. Say you just don't care about the CPU optimizations and you'd rather optimize your install time. Well, binary packages are available. Say you want to pick and choose certain packages that are binary and aren't binary and optimize the ones where you think it actually makes a lot of sense. Well, you can do exactly that as well. Just like you could before with the limited packages available, you can still mix and match packages as you feel like doing so. So if you want to have your browser and LibreOffice be binary packages, but then some random application that you know benefits from CPU optimizations as a source package, you can do that. On that note, my portage still wants to compile from source. 
if you use use flag combinations deviating from the profile default, then you can't and won't use the packages. Portage will happily mix and match though, and combine binary packages with locally compiled ones. Gen 2 still remains a source-based distribution, and we are not aiming for a full binary-only installation without any compilation at all. So if you do start to deviate from that default, Portage is going to sensibly assume okay, you don't want to install the binary package, instead, you would like to compile it yourself. This just makes sense, but it is worth keeping in mind if you try to use it yourself. Now, whilst I am more than happy on my Arch install, I did see this interesting take from a self-proclaimed diehard Gen 2 fan. The appeal of Gen 2 is not compiling everything from source, it's having the freedom to install anything you want on nearly any hardware all with stellar documentation and minimal roadblocks. Want to run Enlightenment with OpenRC and Network Manager on a laptop from 2008? Install Gen2. Want ZFS as root on a smart refrigerator? Install Gen2. Want a vanilla GNOME plus systemd install on a brand new laptop? Install Gen2. The decision to ship binary packages only gives users more choices while other distributions have been actively removing one's freedom to choose. Now, as always, if you find a bug with any of these packages, unless you are absolutely certain it's with the upstream application itself, go over to the Gen2 bug tracker, report the bug there, and hopefully the Gen2 team can deal with it. So I guess that's all for today. Are you a Gen2 user? Do you already make use of a couple of binary packages? And with this being here, do you want to make use of a couple more of them? I would love to know. Maybe you want to do a full binary installation and not compile anything. That sounds like a really neat video. Maybe I'll have to mess around with that. I don't know. No promises. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Silly Bear, Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and... Gen... 3. That was bad.